Okay, Mark chapter 14, verse 10. We are heading into the crucifixion. Now, we got to mark one thing. We're going to see many things tonight. And the short passage of the chapter is, if you've read your Bible and you've been saved many years and you've been to a church and you've heard preaching, we know what's coming up. We know that Jesus Christ is going to be crucified. We know he's going to be buried. And we know he's going to resurrect. We know he's going to be around for 40 days and he's going to the right hand of your father. And we know a man named Saul who's going to be called Paul comes up. But where we are in the Gospels now, they don't know nothing. Only Jesus knows. This woman that comes up and breaks the alabaster box and takes the, the, the ointment, precious ointment, and puts it on his head. And she and Jesus says, she's done this for my burial. Did she know that? Now, she knew what it was. Now, the scripture bounds would have been olive oil. But she wasn't anointing him king. Christ is king, but he ain't king yet. That's what the church gets all messed up about. Yeah, he's on the throne right now, but he's not king. He's going to be the king of kings, the lord of lords of Israel. Never the church. And in verse 10, we pick up Judas Iscariot. This is the one that got angry. This is the one that said, well, it could have been sold and given to the poor. This is the one we will learn later on. It hasn't come up yet. The Bible say he was a thief and he held the bag. Come on. You would think that Jesus know better that the, that the treasure he would choose would be a thief. And there are churches that chooses men into the position of the church with no biblical grounds. We were in a church one time. They didn't have deacons. They had trustees. You want to give me a chapter and verse on that one, please? And then when you look at some of these churches and the deacons they choose, and you look at the qualifications for the deacons found in three places in the Bible, one when it talks about Stephen and then uh, Timothy and, and Titus, Man, you're way off the issue. You don't have to have a deacon. Funny, more churches today have deacons and they don't have pastors. Judas is scary. Now, Judas means it's a Greek Judah. That's what it means. Iscariot is. A man of Caria. Now there's a place in Judah, Caria, and there's a place in Moab, Caria, and it, it means cities. You'll find this Caria in the Song of Solomon's. Quite possibly where the Antichrist is going to be. The, the, the Antichrist is going to be part Jewish. He has to be. One of the twelve. So you take one and twelve, what do you get? You get thirteen. Every time Jews comes up, one of the twelve, one of the twelve, one of the twelve, one of the twelve. And you add those two up, you get thirteen. Went to the chief priest, plural. Supposed to be only one. And the, and the, and the, the law said... High priest. Now they're chief priest. Things haven't changed. To betray him unto them. Now let's go back to verse 1. Where we were yesterday. And two days the feast of the Passover. And the unleavened bread. And the chief priests. There they are. And the scribes sought how they might take him by crab. And Jesus is at this house of Simon the leper. He's having a meal. The alabaster box is broken. He's anointed with the ointment. Judas gets highly ticked off. And what's Judas do? 
he runs in the chief reef. We'll see engine. We're not going to look at it right now. We'll see it in a moment. So he goes to the chief priest and says, ha ha! I'll help you get rid of Jesus. And when they heard it, they were glad. Remember, remember where we are. We are at the feast of the Passover coming up. The Passover was a celebration of feast of when all the lambs were, were slain and the blood was put upon the doorpost and above the door frame, that death angel would not enter that house that had the blood. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. That Israel came out of Egypt that night under the redemption of the blood of the lambs. They have the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, here is a man that comes up of the disciples, of the twelve, and he says, listen, I'll turn them over to you. And they're, woohoo, all right. And if he gets caught, let the people get mad at him, but not us. We'll deny everything. And promise to give him money. A promissory note. And he doesn't even get partial or anything. And he sought how he might conveniently betray him. So all your expensive stores are called convenience stores. Because you're too lazy to go down the street to the real store. You're too impatient to wait overnight till the store opens. You pay the excess amount of money for a convenience store. And the first day of unleavened bread, which is also combined into the Passover... When they killed the Passover, it used to be two distinct feasts. Passover and the Feast of Unleavened. Passover was the night they left. Unleavened bread was to celebrate. When they left Egypt, they didn't have time to leaven the bread. The dough was fresh. His disciples said unto him, <clears throat> Where will thou go and prepare that thou meetest the Passover? Where we're going to go. He's sending forth two of his disciples and says to him, Go ye to the city. And there shall ye meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. Now remember, you say, How difficult is this? We're in the Passover. Everybody is supposed to be, all the males are supposed to be in Jerusalem at the Passover. There are three times of the year. The Day of Atonement, the Passover, and the Feast of Tabernacles. All the males were to be in Jerusalem. Carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him. That's a sign. Jews require a sign. You notice how he doesn't say a, a woman. Because women were the women women were the the, the pictures of women bearers. You had all the women going down the well. It's quite maybe that this guy was a servant, a colored man, maybe. But here's a man carrying a pitcher of water. And whether so he shall go in, say ye to the good man in hell. So not to the one bearing the water, the pitcher of water. But when you when he goes to the place he's going to, go to that the person of that house, the good man of the house, referring that verse 13 may be a servant. The master saith, that's God, Jesus, the rabbi. The master saith, talking to the good man in the house that may have a servant. Where is the guest chamber? Where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples. He will show you a large upper room. You know, everybody says the upper room, but they never say the large upper room. Furnished and prepared there, make ready for us. And when his disciples went forth, came into the city and found as he had said unto Of course, everything Jesus says comes to bed. 
they made ready the Passover. Okay. There it goes. Now, let's get the whole story. Matthew 26. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to finish Mark 14 and, you know, oh, look, we're done. Verse 14. Because there's a lot in it with the others. Mark, uh, Matthew 26, 14. Then one of them is 12, 13, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests, plural, and said unto what will you give me? Okay, so Mark, they promised him money. Matthew, Judas walks up and says, okay, now get this. We're going to see this in a moment. Watch it. How much will you give me? There's a bargaining. What will you give me? I will deliver him unto you. And they conveyed with him for 30 pieces of silver. And from that time, he saw opportunity to betray him. Judas is looking for a time with Jesus. All right, this is it. Now, the first day of the first of Passover, the bread, uh, unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where wilt thou prepare for thee to eat the Passover? He says, go we into the city, such a man, and say to him, the master say, okay, Mark says, follow this man to the house, and there's the good man of the house. Matthew, it's the actual man carrying the, but, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you read what it says? He said, go into the city for such a man and say unto him, the master said, the time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with the disciples. There is no man carrying a pitcher of water. Did you see that? Jesus has taken, follow the man with the pitcher of water, Mark. When you get to the house, you talk to the house owner, implying that the other guy is a servant. Talk to the house, the good man in the house, the house owner. Hey, we're going to make three. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Scripture was scripture. Luke. Luke chapter 22. Now, how many churches will go and mess it all up? Luke 22, 3. Then, the verse 2, chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then he's having dinner with Simon in the house, and the woman comes, breaks down the bastard bar, anoints his head, then, Satan, then enters Satan to Judas. How or what vessel did Satan enter into Judas? Judas was angry for what that woman did to Jesus. You better be careful with your anger. You wasted it on Jesus. It said that he was filled with indignation. And Satan comes into Judas, and I don't know how, surname Iscariot, being the number of the twelve, when he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains, how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and claimed and coveted, coveted to, to give him money. And he promised the opportunity to betray him, Jesus, unto them. In the absence of the multitude. And it came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. He sent Peter and John. Oh, look at that, Peter and John. Go 
prepare us the Passover that they may eat. And they said unto him, Where wilt thou prepare? And he said unto him, Behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water, follow him into the house where he entered in. And ye shall say to the good man of the house, That's not the man with the water. The master says unto thee, The master God talking to the master of the house. Where is the guest chamber? Where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples. And he showed him a large upper room furnished there make ready. So what you have is when you put the Gospels together you have Judas indignation irate that this woman wastes this precious substance, that's what the Bible word is, on Jesus. He is so irate, he is simmering. At that point, Satan pops up. And he ruins the life of Judas for all his eternity. Now, Zechariah 11, Old Testament, Zechariah 11, verse 12, Israel, and 13, rebellion. And I said unto them, if you think good, give me my price. If not for bear. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. What did Judas say? Zechariah rec records it long before Judas was even born. That's the conversation that he has with the chief priest. What do you think? How much do you think he's worth? And the Lord said unto me, that's God, Jehovah. And this is what he's going to do there. Cast it unto the potter. A goodly price that was praised at, of them. And I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house. Of, and that's what he's going to do later. After Jesus has been betrayed. It's funny how that 30 pieces of silver is only found in Zechariah. And only found in the Gospel of Matthew. It's not found in Mark. It's not found in Luke. And it's not found in John. Zechariah. And Matthew. And it's all because. One woman. Gave what she had. Broke it for Jesus. And this man's life is ruined. It's not her fault. And realize, Christian, there may be somebody that you have broke whatever you have. And you have given it all to God. And someone may have ruined their life because of it. That's a hard fact. Now, don't go and condemning yourself. Because that woman is never condemned. Judas is. That woman is going to rejoice in heaven. For what she gave to Jesus. And Judas is going to be in hell. 